Luger, I'm going to tell you something that happened to me a long time ago. But, well, it was early 20th century. Out down, it was out down in the Delta, down south, the yeah, Mississippi Delta region. I was on the plantation, me and my family, hot day of work, hot day of sun. Yeah, sword overalls. Yeah, my family, we done finished our plowing and picking in the field. You know, my family retired back to our shack. Yeah, it was a shotgun shack. My brother, a couple brothers there. My woman. Yeah, ramblers. They're rambling, getting ready to have a wild night rambling. That did. Jew joint. But, uh, anyway. So I thought, uh, you know, I, they all finished up the work, but I'll work horse. Uh, finish, I think, I, I thought uh, maybe I'll go get a couple extra, uh, bills of, you know, a couple extra bales of cotton if I could. Everyone else retired to their quarters, getting ready for their wild night of sipping that fire water. But, uh, me, I thought I just might as well get an early start on the next day, and work's never done. <laughs> So I went out there, the sun wasn't quite down yet. And I'm walking through the field, I saw a couple of, I had my sag, I picked, started picking an extra bear. I kept hearing something in the distance. Psst, psst, it called me. Kinda how I called you at the Lydell Museum. Just go, psst, psst. I looked around. It was just me in this field all alone, forced to the left, to the right. Yeah, big long field, this field way long, about, uh, it was about two country miles long. So I kept looking around, I didn't know nothing out there. I don't know, maybe it was a possum. Maybe it was someone trying to tree a possum with that dog, or they yelling for that dog to tree the coon, tree a possum. Nah, no one around, just me, sweaty, I'm sweating. I wipe my, my tired brow as I'd usually do it. I want my brow so much you can see where my hand streaks across. I, I'm getting lighter up there. <laughs> turn to a white man on my forehead. Yeah. Want my brow so much I turn to a white man on my forehead. You know, crack of time. But anyway, yeah. So I, uh, I started looking for where the sound's coming from. He's getting louder. Psst, psst, psst. I look all around. I think, what is what's going on? What's going on? Shit. I look around a little more and it sounds like it's coming from down low. Yeah, it's definitely not someone trying to tree a possum. That's over the tree. I don't hear no hounds, possum, hound, none of that. Good, good old dog Blue. No, I didn't hear him. I didn't hear Blue at all. He's a good dog, though. But uh, I look around and I look down and there's a cotton pod. And I, it sounds like that I'm starting to hear something. I bend over and go, psst, psst. Look down and I, I see it. Something goes. Look, I just gotta keep looking. It goes, it goes, psst, psst. Now, what is that? I'm thinking. All of a sudden, I hear a voice that goes, Do you believe in God? Sound a lot like me. I thought, Believe in God? <laughs> what? I look back down, and there it is. It's a little bow weevil. Little bow weevil's coming, he's coming out of his little pot house. He's looking right up with me, is that little appendage sticking out of you? Looks at me, go, do you believe in God? I looked at that bow weevil, I said, I don't even believe in myself after hearing you ask me that. It's talking bow weevil, I don't know what to believe. And that little bow weevil started to tell me some things. He, start, he said, he said, uh, how did the cosmos form? Do you know? I said, do I know how the cosmos form? Hold on, let me wipe my brow. And I, Little thing kept talking, and I, he was asking these questions, and uh, <clears throat> he, he, he talked to, he brought you a Beluga eventually, and uh, Beluga, he used your voice, and a Beluga, I, Beluga, he, he I, I don't know, uh, I don't know how to say this Beluga, but what he told me, uh, I was just standing in that field all alone looking down at the little, little thing. He started talking about trains, and he started talking, he said, do you know how the cosmos formed again? And I, 
I, I didn't know what to say. I just stood and looked at the little little peck I had. He was a nice little guy. Now, I forgot all about picking cotton or trying to get another barrel. I just stood there scratching my temple. I almost scratched a little nick into it. I think I bled a little bit, but uh, <clears throat> every time he'd ask these questions, he was asking them like he wasn't quite asking me, like he knew what, what the answer was, but I didn't know. But uh, he just kept asking. Uh, he said uh, something about bringing him a bag of flour. How much he'd like a bag of flour. He'd like some fresh squeezed orange juice. Him and his family loved eating the cotton pods. And even though uh ruined our crop, he said it wasn't his fault. They had to eat too. He said uh, if it hadn't been cotton pods, he'd been a man. He'd probably be trying to get, uh, you know, eating what we drink. Eating cola and chicken meat and barbecue, that kind of stuff. But he asked some questions I... To this day, I, I don't, I don't have an answer for Beluga. But what he told me about you, uh, he insinuated you might have some answers. And I, Beluga, I, there's one thing he asked me, and I don't know how to say it. I'll have to ask you another day.